sampling. I'm at the CI jumping page in ESCII, and here is our population filled in, suggesting uh, an infinite number of potential data points. I'm going to take some samples of size uh, 15, so I set N as 15 over here, and take a sample. And there is our first sample. Take another one, take another one, and another, and those successive samples is our first illustration of sampling variability. Overall, we get more points from around the centre here as we'd expect, and every now and again some points from out the tails as we'd expect. But big variation from sample to sample. Sampling variability is surprisingly large quite often and we need to build our intuitions about that. Note that we're running a simulation in the computer, so we're privileged. We can see the population. Usually, a researcher only sees the single sample, and that's all we have to go on. So we have to bring to mind, in our mind's eye, that there is underlying this some population somewhere, and that we could easily have got any of these other samples instead of the particular one we did get. Always bear in mind what might be different, what else could we have obtained. Okay, let's turn the population on again and mark the mean with each sample. So here is a sample and there is the sample mean. If we do it again and drop down successive means and then run this, we get another illustration of sampling variability. This is the shows the extent to which sample means dance around as we take successive independent random samples of size 15 from this population. That is the dance of the means. So play your choice of music on your computer or act it out as you choose. Now, here's a question. These are for samples of size 15. Suppose we took samples of size 60. Would the dance be wider or narrower? Would the means of samples of size 60 be closer to the uh, population mean of mu or further away? Pause the video and think about that for a tick. I'll now set n to be 60. There we go, and now run this again. Obviously we have four times as many data points in each sample, and would you agree that the dance of the means is narrower, less frenetic dancing? Is that what you uh, predicted? I expect it probably was. Why do we bother taking bigger samples? So that our sample mean is likely to be closer, a better estimate of the population mean. Mu. Now I've gone back to samples of size 15 and I'm running a sequence of samples and I'm going to pile up the sample means down at the bottom here to form the mean heap. That's a pile of all the sampling, uh, the sample means from a large number of samples, all of size n equals 15. If we take a large number of uh, sample statistics from a sequence of samples and pile them all up to make a distribution. That's called the sampling distribution of that statistic. So here we have, down the bottom here, the sampling distribution of the sample mean. The empirical sampling distribution of the sample mean, meaning it's what we got on this particular run. If we did it again, we'd get a slightly different shape. Now, statistical theory allows us to put a curve on that distribution, and this is called the theoretical sampling distribution of the sample mean. That's what we expect of our statistical model of a normal distribution, and random sampling is correct. So there it is, a normal distribution, which is the theoretical sampling distribution of the sample mean for samples of size n equals 15. Thought experiment again. Suppose we took samples of size 60, would you expect the sampling distribution down here to be narrower or wider? 
you could try it yourself. But you would probably say, hmm, narrower, because the dance of the means is narrower, this sampling distribution would have a smaller standard deviation. Let's mark in the population the standard deviation lines. That's one standard deviation, two standard deviations out from the mean. And we can also mark down in the sampling distribution here, the theoretical sampling distribution, standard deviations of this distribution. Now these are so special, they're given a special name, the standard error. So the standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. And that's one of our charts. And the formula for the standard error, well, if you look around here for the pop-outs, where, how about this one? The standard error for the sampling distribution curve, it equals sigma, that's the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of n, the sample size. So up here we have 20 as the standard deviation in the population. We're taking samples of size 15, so square root of that is roughly 4, a little less than 4. So we'd expect the standard error to be 20 divided by the square root of 15, which will be round about 5. And there it is, 5.16 is the standard error, the curve standard error of this theoretical sampling distribution curve of the sample mean for n equals 15. So again, if we think of samples of size 60 instead of 15, what would we expect the standard error to be? It would be sigma divided by the square root of 60 instead of 15. So n four times as large, the standard error would be half as large. And so we'll have a curve down here that's half as wide as this curve. Standard error. We're well on the way to confidence intervals, which are built on standard errors. Standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Easy, isn't it?